Okay, I'm going to show you how to play a little bit with Factormine R, how to do PCA. And I'm going to use a data set, which is uh, breast cancer data. So you can download it from, from the description. And here we go. So let's first take a look at inside. Breast. And you can see that we have one in ID, which is going to identify the patients. We are not interested in this variable, so it does not have any meaning. And we have this other categorical variable, this factor, with two levels, benign and malign. Okay, so this is the diagnosis of the breast cancer tumor. And then we have the last observation, the number 33. Remember that we have 33 variables. The last one has a lot of NA, so probably this is a, a typing problem. So maybe the data set is full of spaces at the end of the, of, of the data set. So I'm going to remove that. So I'm going to, first I'm going to remove the last observation, so remove column 33. And for the data analysis, I'm going to remove also the first two categorical variables. So let's remove those, one and two. Okay, let's check this again. Now we have 30 quantitative variables, so everything should be fine. So be before starting this P PCA analysis, remember that PCA is going to work if you have a lot of redundancy. And in order to check redundancy, I'm going to plot a correlation matrix. So remember this library core plot. And I'm going to do a core plot, cal computing the correlation matrix of all the variables in my data set. Okay? And you can see th this could be zoom a little bit. Forget about the diagonal. Actually, we can remove the diagonal. False. So you can see a couple of interesting facts. So one is, is that everything is almost blue. That means that all the variables are positively correlated, but I'm not interested in that. What I like about this diagram is that you can see that you have a lot of large circles. So large circles means that you have variables which are strongly correlated. For instance, the, the perimeter of the tumor is highly correlated with the area of the tumor, which is obvious, but this means that we have a lot of redundancy in, in this data set. So mm, principal component analysis is going to work pretty well. We're going to do a lot of compression of, of this data set. Okay, so let's start with that. I'm going to put everything in this results variable, results PCA. And remember, I'm going to use the function PC PCA from the facto my library. So let me load the library facto mine R. Okay, I'm also going to load facto extra for visualization. Okay, so now we can play a little bit. So let's play with the data. I'm going to use all the default parameters. And here we go. So now for free, we have this correlation variable. And this is interesting. Now you can see that all the arrows in the first dimension are pointing to the right. What's the meaning of this? The meaning of this is that all the loadings are going to be positive. And that means that the first uh, principal component is going to be a scale factor. Remember that we have this difference between the scale factors and shape factors. So the first one is, is going to be a scale factor. And a scale factor is good for classifying individuals, but it's bad for classifying variables. And as you can see here, the second dimension does a better job classifying that. And we're going to explore later the third dimension. Okay, next step, let's inspect the eigenvalues. And we can simply print PCA eigenvalues. Okay, so remember we have to a couple of criteria in order to, to say how many dimensions are we going to require. The first criterion was everything that has an eigenvalue larger than one is going to be relevant. In this case, you can see that the last one with eigenvalue larger than one is component number six, dimension number six. And that means that with six dimensions, we are going to capture all the relevant information. And the other criterion was try to settle a threshold. Let's say that we say 70% is going to be good enough compression for me. If we use 70%, then just three uh, uh, principal components will do the job. If we take, let's say, 90%, we're going to require six or seven principal components. Okay, but that, it, it seems that with three components, we're going to have a lot of information there. Okay, let's plot this a to, to have a visual idea of, of, of this eigenvalues. Eigenvalues. Uh, res PCA. Okay, so here you go. You see that the first one is the one which is contributing the most. The second one is also nice. And then we have this sort of plateau. Actually, th there is this idea that you can also use this elbow method as in, in k-means clustering or in cl clustering in general to say how many dimensions are you going to require. And in this case, the elbow is around three. So another criterion is using this, th this, this representation to say that three is going to be my threshold. Let's take a look at correlations again. 
between variables and PCA. So we're going to use this function PCA variables res PCA. And here we go. We have the same representation as before, but now we can change. We can say that we want to plot, let's say, the second and the third axis. And now you can see, as I was mentioning before, so scale factors are great for classifying individuals, but, are, but in, in this case, using dimensions two and three, we're going to have a better description of, of that. So repel is going to be a slow in this data set because it's large. But now let's plot some repel so we can understand a little bit this this information and now you can see that the the, the arrows that are, are lower angles in this case let's say radius mean is going to be correlated negatively with dimension 3 and symmetry mean is going to be co positively correlated with the other one and so on and so forth uh, but again this is not th the best way to represent the data we have all the choices and I'm going to use uh, again a, cor a correlation plot correlation plot of the residual coordinates okay and here we go so again i'm saying the same things over and over again because i'm, I'm trying to show you the, the same information under different angles so first you can see that all the circles are in the same, of the same color in the first one so this is a scale factor and dimension two and dimension three is a shape our shape factor because you, you can see blues and reds all over the place okay so let's now take a look at individuals so let's oh, first of all let's see the contribution of each variable to to its principal component contribution okay i'm going to to use choice equals var so now i'm plotting the contribution to the the first principal component you can see that we have a lot of parameters contributing there we can also take all the top 15 let's say so we're cutting this diagram but in this case i think it's better to plot to plot them all now we can say the same but just which are the, the ones contributing to the second principal component. As you can see, there is one which is contributing the most, which is this dimension mean. This is the size, let's say, the dimension of, of, of the tumor. And we can repeat this for number three. And as we are saying that the first three components are going to be the most relevant, we can aggregate all those charts. So we can say what are the most important variables regarding the three of them. And in this case, you can see that if you put the threshold there, the variables that come from here to the other side are going to be the most relevant ones. Okay, as you can see, this is not as with this happens always with real data. So the, the you can find data sets in tutorials there that everything is wonderful, but when you take a, a real data set, things are start to become more more messier. Okay, but but let's move on a little bit. Now let's take a look at individuals. And now we're going to plot again a piece. PCA individuals res PCA and you see this cloud of points we don't see anything clear but now we have this idea that we can use an index for coloring individuals and we're going to use that categorical variable which we know what is, that is relevant there which is diagnosis what happens if we include that oh this is wonderful so you can see that the first dimension is almost the, the, the most relevant one so if you want to classify patients with a uh, a benign tumor is going to be the red the reddish points there and then the first dimension is doing all the job so everything that has a negative dimension is going to work pretty well and everything that is a uh, positive dimension is going to work in that in that regard it's going to classify the malign tumors pretty well too and actually you can do a couple of things here so you, you could try to do some clustering using this information or better now that you have the real information of benign and malign Tumors, you could go back to the, the first part of the course when we talk about classification and try to use, I don't know, logistic regression if you want to say what's the probability of having a cancer. And you can see that the classification is pretty good just by taking these two dimensions. So let's take a look at what happens when we mix, let's say, axis one and, sorry, axis one and three. Oh, sorry, uh, missing bracket. Uh, okay, let's repeat this. And again, you can see that comparing dimension one and dimension three, you still actually a better job. So except this, th this few outliers there, this uh, vertical line is classifying pretty well. What if we take two and three? And here we go. Now we have this mixture of data. So what's the interpretation of this? The interpretation of this is that the, the first principal component the, is a scale factor. And scale factors are amazing classifying individuals, but do a, a poor job classifying variables. And you can see 
that dichotomy if you plot a if you use a biplot to represent the data. So biplot rest PCA. You can see now that as I was saying, so classified individuals are great using so let, let me use this color as again, color index individual, sorry. Uh, breast diagnosis as I was saying so if you are coloring individuals th then you can see that the first principal component is the best one because being above this line or below is not much relevant so dimension 2 is not very important the, the most important one is is the, the x-axis in this graph but on the other hand the, the arrows are meaningless if you are trying to understand them in terms of the first principal component because all the variables are pretty much correlated with that and this is pretty much it. So this is an invitation to explore the data using principal components. As a bonus track, I'm going to show you a library which is amazing, which is called FactoShiny. And it's going to create an, an interactive application to do PCA for you. So let's load the library and let's plug this into a variable. This is not required, but sometimes it's interesting to uh, store information about that. And I'm going to call the PC, sorry, PCA Shiny. Uh, let's use again the breast data set okay and now this is amazing you can see that this is my web browser so I'm going to scale this a little bit so this is my web browser and you can see that uh, you have this interactive application so first of all now you have the score plot in which you have the individuals plotted versus the first and second dimension and you have the correlation plot as, as before the good thing is that now you can play a little bit with the data so you can see that you have additional quantitative variables. I imagine that you want to leave some variables apart. I'm not going to do that. But you can also say that you want to use some, some categorical variables outside. So for, and actually, as I'm only having one categorical variable, automatically it's a store into this variable. So let's play a little bit with the variables. So imagine that we want to plot variables. I'm going to compare access two with access three. And then magically, we have this representation as before. If you want to do more, a more professional, let's say, representation, you can reduce or increase the labels in order to have something more, let's say, fancy. Or, for instance, going back to individuals, let's plug this one and two. We can uh, mark these categories, so we, we can use color according to the supplementary variable here. Like the, let me say, yes, qualitative variable. And then we see the plot as before. So these are the malign tumors and these are the benign tumors so we have automatically this uh, this representation um, you, you can explore this th this application is very simple to use but one thing that i love is that you can generate a report so you can choose the language you're going to love this you can ex export this to to a word document it's going to take a little bit and here you go so you have your own reports so you have the data contains 569 individuals 32 variables one qualitative and you can see this is amazing. So this is uh, it's giving you all the interpretation of the data. So this is the decomposition of the eigenvalues, the first diagrams that we've uploaded, this classification using individuals category. And you, you actually, you have some interpretation of the data. So you can see dimension one opposes individuals characterized, blah, blah, blah. So this is a definition. And I'll say groups one. And it's going to tell you what variables are more relevant. So high values of variables like fractal dimension, words, blah, 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 blah. So it's giving you, in common language, in English language in this case, an interpretation of the first principal components. So you're going to love this tool and, and, and you can look like a pro using FactorShiny.